Welcome to Red 5 Standing By. This is extremely late, but I wanted to do a quick video on Star Wars Last Shot by Daniel Jose Alder. This book came out about a month before Solo, A Star Wars Story, and it gave us a little bit of a taste of what we were going to get in the movie. The book follows Han and Lando during three different points in time, the present which takes place two years after the Battle of Endor, ten years before that with Han and Chewie, and then five years before that following Lando and L3. In each point in time, we learn of Han and Lando's dealings with a device called the Phalanx and its creator of Fizen Gore. I won't go into too much about the plot to avoid spoilers, but I thought this was a fun mystery adventure story. What I like most about this novel is how well Han and Lando are written. There wasn't a single thing that happened that felt out of character, but at the same time giving them new personal challenges for them to overcome. Han struggles to adjust to his new life as a husband and father to two-year-old Ben. Alder is able to explore this aspect without it seeming too cliche. Han just wants to jet off on the next adventure, but finds himself missing his family when he's in the thick of it. I also thought that Ben's relationship with his father is less dramatic than what Ren describes in The Force Awakens, which probably means things are going to get more difficult as he gets older. At this point in time, the New Republic is beginning to take shape and Lando is heading Calrissian Enterprises, a company that specializes in droid production based in Cloud City on Bespin. Even though he's the head of a huge corporation, we kind of discover that Lando has fear of commitment, which I think adds a fun dynamic to the character. Like I mentioned before, this book jumps around between several different points in time. I do like how it shows the contrasting personalities of the younger and older versions of these characters. You get to see these younger personalities play out on the big screen in the solo standalone film, but I like that this book illustrates how their actions come back around to haunt them in the future. Just as in other canon material, we are introduced to new characters. In this story, Han and Lando are accompanied by a handful of new faces. Their crew for this adventure consists of an Ugnaught droid expert who works for Lando, a young wisecracking pilot who tries to pass himself off as Han Solo when he first shows up, a Twi'lek master strategist and love interest for Lando, and my personal favorite, Pikba and Ewok Slicer. Now I know people have had their issues with the Endor natives before, but I've always been an Ewok defender. I've never had a problem with them helping out the Alliance at the Battle of Endor, but that's a whole other discussion. As for Pikba, she's one of several Ewoks that left their home planet after the battle. Some help rebel veterans recuperate as therapy Ewoks. Pikba also has a life debt of sorts with Chewie for saving her sister on Endor. Though this is a fun Star Wars story, it isn't the best. There were a few things that I didn't like about the book. I did like how the flashbacks illustrate the maturation of Han and Lando. However, jumping back and forth between different points of time got a little distracting. I would get so invested in the main narrative only to be pulled out of the story when it would suddenly flash back. This might also have to do with the fact that I've listened to this book on Audible and it's narrated by three different people, Mark Thompson, January Lavoie, and the book's author, Daniel Jose Alder. Thompson, as always, does a fantastic job and Lavoie does as well, even her Lando voice wasn't too distracting. Alder, on the other hand, isn't the best at narrating. It's not that he doesn't do character voices, it's more that he sounded like he's just reading rather than telling a story. He narrated the young solo portion of the book, I would almost immediately be taken out of the story. He's a fine author, I just think he should stick to writing and stay away from narration. Faisangor wasn't that captivating as the villain either. I liked that the main bad guy was someone other than an Imperial or a Sith Lord. I just didn't completely understand his motivations, his obsession with droids and his bias against organics as he puts it, and how all of this transforms into a desire to rule the galaxy. Which was my biggest issue with this novel, not every story that takes place in the Star Wars universe has to threaten the fate of the galaxy. One of the best things about the canon outside the episodic films is the possibility of telling smaller contained stories that don't have to but can ultimately connect to the main saga. If Faisangor had a simpler goal that didn't have galactic implications, it wouldn't take away from the larger stories that Han and Lando take part in, and also not distract from the moments in the book that further the development of these characters. So in short, Last Shot was a fun story that dealt with some personal issues Han and Lando have. However, in my opinion, there are other Star Wars novels in the new canon I would recommend reading over this one. But if you're still interested in this book, you can listen to it for free on Audible when you sign up for a 30-day trial by visiting audibletrial.com forward slash videos by Andrew. You'll receive one free credit that you can use towards Star Wars Last Shot and support this channel in the process. So those are my thoughts on Star Wars Last Shot. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave them in the comments below. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe as I will be talking anything and everything Star Wars, and I would love for you to stay up to date on all of those videos. As always, thank you for watching, and may the Force be with you.